What's up everybody, Super Deberks fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2015 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. Huge thanks to all of you that helped support the Fund Anything campaign that helped to make this car happen. So, uh, if you subscribe to this channel, then you know that uh, this is my personal car. I just picked it up a couple of weeks ago and uh, it's fantastic. I love it, that's why I bought it. But being a car reviewer, I'm going to approach this as a standard car review and give you the pros and the cons of this car. I'm not just gonna be biased and say everything I love about it. So, as far as the exterior goes on this car though, I think it's beautiful. Um, you know, I just, everything about it, it's very modern now, uh, but it still has a lot of retro cues, which is what I like. You know, you still have the long, bulging hood and you have the, you know, aggressive pony emblem there and the grill and uh, the headlights, which, you know, have a little throwback to the original 1965 Mustangs with those little scalps, which are now LEDs on this model. And uh, overall, I just think it looks really great. You know, there's lots of cool body lines and uh, little creases, you know, the back end with those LED taillights that are three-dimensional um, and just so many beautiful lines on this car and uh, I think from every angle it looks stunning. Right, so for the interior of the 2015 Mustang EcoBoost, well uh, this one is the premium trim level with the 201A package, so it's very nice. Uh, I mean it feels like it's an interior from a car that's double its price tag. It's really that nice, I mean I review lots of cars and this is one of the nicest interiors uh, that I can remember. and it's it's just, it really is nice. So first things first, getting into this car, nice and solid doors. Uh, you sit down in these seats and they're very comfortable and they grip you really well too. So the bolstering is just enough that, you know, it, it holds you in, but it's still comfortable. It's not overly aggressive like, you know, some crazy Recaros or something like that would be. Uh, it's a really nice mix of comfort and, um, you know, it really still holds you in. And uh, I really like them a lot. And, you know, they're perforated leather and uh, they're also heated and cooled here in the premium. Very, very nice seats, and um, I like them a lot. One critique I do have, though, about the refinement of these seats is that the leather is a little loose in places. Ford's kind of been known for that, I've noticed in Mustangs in the past. The leather isn't always very tight on the seats. It uh, just detracts a little bit from the quality of it, but it still is very soft and supple leather, and it's very nice. Next is the steering wheel in this car, which is really nice. So it's smaller than the previous generation Mustang steering wheels, and uh, it really, it, it's a beautiful wheel, though, with the chrome and metal accents on it, and it has a good amount of buttons, but they're logically placed and easy to uh, use and uh, you have a really good 9 and 3 grip here and uh, 10 and 2 notches are very very tiny but they do have them and overall I mean it's just a very nice wheel the leather is extremely soft and it's just a great place to put your hands next is the gauges in this car which uh, I'll admit aren't my favorite part about it so you know I love the retro design of the gauges in the 2013 and 2014 Mustangs they went a little more modern with these and you know they spelled out revolutions per minute and ground speed um, but the more that I've looked at them the more that I use them uh, the more I really like them actually I mean the font could be more exciting but they're very clear easy to read um, and they're electroluminescent too which is very cool and uh, you know I like them a lot that cool little uh, color screen in the middle is standard on all Mustangs now which is really nice that includes your track apps for you know your 0 to 60 runs you can do and all that kind of stuff quarter mile times and it also you know since this is the EcoBoost version with the turbo it also has a boost gauge in there and any other gauges you could want you can you know keep tabs on everything through that nice little screen in the middle very nice to have and uh, really gives this car a little bit more of a nicer quality coming along to the center of the dashboard here again very nice you know you have this aluminum trim here for the premiums it's a uh, really nice and high quality uh, and everything here I mean like the volume knob is heavy and uh, really it feels like you're opening a bank vault with the way that uh, they feel when you turn them. Everything is just extremely high quality aluminum and stuff. Uh, you have these little switches down here for the different uh, driving modes, steering modes, traction control, and hazard lights, and those are all extremely heavy and, you know, really high quality. I mean, it's just, again, I'm so blown away by how nice the interior is on these. Uh, and then this beautiful 8-inch uh, touchscreen that you have is very high resolution. Same basic My Ford Touch stuff that you get in any other Ford, so there's nothing unique there. But it's very clear, easy to read, easy to use, and I find it to be pretty quick and snappy with its responses. Some people complain about it being laggy or something. I don't really have that issue. Uh, it seems to work really well for me. 
Also, this car being the 201A package, it has a 12-speaker sound system with a subwoofer from Shaker, and uh, it's a really beautiful sounding stereo. I mean, I've driven this car over a thousand miles now, and uh, one of the best stereos I've ever heard. I think the Jeep Grand Cherokee that was fully loaded that I reviewed, that had a slightly better stereo, um, and maybe some of the Mercedes and stuff, but this is really a spectacular stereo system in this car as well. As far as storage space goes in the Mustang, uh, it's not bad. So, you know, you have map pockets here in the doors, no bottle holder, but the map pockets do go very deep into the doors there, so it's a, a very long space. And then coming along to the center here, you have this tiny little tray. Uh, you can't put a whole lot of stuff in there, but you could rest a cell phone in there partially, things like that. Um, then you have two cup holders, which are illuminated as well, which is kind of cool. And then you have uh, your center armrest here, which is also very soft and nicely padded. Uh, and it's very deep as well and you have you know a line in you have an SD card slot you have a USB jack in there and, uh, and then it's a pretty deep space you can fit a lot of stuff as a change holder and everything else so um, very versatile and very good uh, storage space in there and the last little storage space in this car is this little sunglasses holder which is to the left of the steering column here and it's just large enough to fit a pair of sunglasses and that's about it but really nice to have that and uh, yeah just a cool little spot for a cubby Backseat space in the Mustang is a, a pretty close to what it has always been, not very usable. It's a little bit more improved over the previous generation, um, you know, but I still wouldn't put anyone back there for long periods of time unless they're very small. Um, you know, and also because of this new fastback design, uh, the way the roof is curved and comes down and slants, uh, the headroom is actually very lacking. So a headroom, I, if, me, myself, I'm five foot nine. I can sit behind myself and legroom is okay, I have an inch or two, but as far as headroom, my head is right up against the glass there. So anyone over five foot nine, you're gonna be hunched over in this car if you sit in the back seat. Um, so, but again, no one buys a Mustang for its back seat space, so not an issue. Trunk space in the Mustang is actually really good this year. So, uh, you know, it's pretty wide and uh, with the back seats, they can actually fold flat so you can have lots of space there. But even with the seats in the upright position there, you have, uh, you know, it's a pretty deep trunk. And, you know, this being the 201A package has the subwoofer there and the one alcove. Uh, so not quite as much room, but still plenty. And, uh, you know, for a car of this type, it's pretty good. All right, so let's start up and go for a drive. Uh, all the Mustangs now, base models or the nicer premiums, they all have keyless entry and push button start. So you just have this cool little uh, Mustang key and uh, you just leave that in your pocket. Hit the start button and it starts right up. All right, so setting off in the 2015 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. So, uh, first thing that you notice, I think, when you start driving this car is uh, the clutch is a little bit on the heavy side and it's a little tricky to engage if you're not used to driving this car all the time. So, it's uh, it took me a little while to get used to it and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. It's one of those clutches where it, like, you bring it up and it's, like, really lightly sprung for the first part and then the second part's heavily sprung so you kind of have this varying feedback and so trying to do a smooth engagement is a little tricky um, but that's something that with time and experience doesn't become an issue after a while so uh, other things though driving along here on this bumpy park road and uh, it gives me a good feel for what it, you know how it soaks up bumps and stuff and it does a really good job it's extremely comfortable that's one of the big things about this new Mustang with the independent rear suspension now and stuff is it's just so refreshing fine so comfortable and the ride is just I mean everyone that's ridden in this car just comments on wow it's so smooth it's insane how smooth and quiet it is um, you know the sound insulation is very good in here and uh, overall it just again it feels like it's double the price tag with how nice it is it's uh, really kind of crazy and um, another thing though is uh, visibility in the Mustang which uh, is actually really good so like I mentioned earlier because the dashboard is lower now um, you have a better view for uh, and the hood is a little bit lower as well, but it is still very long um, And you know, so if you're going up a hill or something peering out over that hood can be a little bit tricky um, But it's uh, it's not too bad obviously again something you just get used to but uh, if you're not used to driving a car with a long hood It's definitely different when you first hop in it the side windows, uh, you know, you can see out of very easily and uh, there's really no blind spot. You do have a, you know, B pillar there, but it's not so thick. I mean, you can see around it because the doors are so large. Uh, you can see around it very easily. Rear visibility is actually excellent. That rear window is huge and with the way the rear view mirror is set up, you have a great view out of the back. And uh, so that's definitely something nice about this car. 
Another thing you notice right off the bat, even at low speeds, is just how much sharper and more precise this gearbox is. Uh, I'll talk more about that later, but uh, you know, every gear is very well defined and it's very smooth. And um, it just, it's a really, it's a joy to use. It's not too heavy, not too light, it's just right. All right, so I'm gonna put the drive mode in a Sport Plus, which will give me sharper throttle response, slightly heavier steering, and allow the stability and traction control systems to be a little more lenient. So, that's on. And let's turn on to this back right here. Let's see how it does. <laughs> it is so fast, it really is. So, I mean, I know, you know, yes, the GT and the V8 would be nice to have, but <laughs> this is really fast. I mean, that was a really quick uh, acceleration. I will not say the speed, but it was fast. Uh, so you're dealing with 310 horsepower and 320 pounds-feet of torque uh, with this little 2.3 liter EcoBoost uh, engine with a you know, turbo on it. And it's, I mean, it's doing like 15 PSI of boost. So, I mean, this thing, it moves. It really does move. Uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> it is, it's, I'm telling you, you gotta drive one. It's really quick, especially with this manual. It just feels great. Anyway, coming up to some corners here and uh, let's see about this handling. So first thing, the steering is still too light, even in the Sport Plus mode. I wish it was a little bit heavier, but it's not bad, uh, just, you know, it's not as heavy as like BRZ I used to own, cars like that. Um, so the steering is a little bit lighter than I would like, uh, but the way it handles corners, it's pretty good. I'm coming up this tight corner here that I always take, and uh, let's see how this body roll is. So you can feel the weight, there's a little bit of roll there, but it really, it sticks its ground and it hugs it. Uh, it's again, this isn't going to be as good as some of the other lower slung sports cars. You can feel that the center of gravity is higher in this car and you, uh, you know, definitely do feel the weight. This is about 3,500 pounds and you feel that, but uh, it does a pretty good job with what it has. So let's see about this power again, shall we? Second gear chirp, it's quick. <laughs> it's quick indeed, oh man. This is so much fun to accelerate. And some people say the power drops off after 5,000 RPMs. You're going so fast by the time you get to 5,000 RPMs, I'm not like, oh man, I'm going slow now. Like, it's it's plenty of power and I have no complaints about the power band stock. Uh, it's really spectacular. And um, yeah, I mean, the way the car handles, you know, now that I'm just cruising along on a normal road here, it's a very comfortable, uh, you know, it's a great, great cruising car. You know, taking it out on the highway, it's very relaxing. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna drive this car around all day here and I'll come back later on and give you some of my updated impressions. Alright, so I've been driving this car around for a while now, and of course, I mean, I own this car, so I've been dr driving it actually for over 1,200 miles, and um, it's it's really nice. So, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning of this review, uh, you know, with the handling, you know, it has a little more body roll uh, than I would like at times, but it's really well controlled, and getting back to the handling, I think one of the biggest reasons why this car doesn't handle as well as it could is because it has these all-season tires. They're these Goodyear all-seasons. Uh, they're 235, 50, uh, 18s on this car because uh, it's not the performance package on this car. It's just the standard premium. And um, I think that, you know, just putting some summer tires on would increase things dramatically. And if you want to firm up the ride a little bit, you can always just go bigger on the wheels so you have a smaller sidewall for your tires and have less squirm there. Um, and you know, there's other things like when you're cruising on the highway, it gets a tiny bit floaty, but it's really, it's so well controlled. Uh, and I just, you know, I'm really nitpicking here because overall this car is fantastic. You know, I reviewed the Boss 302, the 2013, and uh, that was their benchmark for the handling of this new Mustang was the Boss 302. And I feel like, you know, again, the Boss 302 had more aggressive tires. If you put those same tires on this car, I think this would feel sharper than the Boss 302. It's that good with the way that it handles. It's so confidence inspiring, uh, you know, and I just really, I love driving it. It's just, and like I said, it's such a livable car because of how comfortable it is. And you kind of do have the best of both worlds. It still handles really well. I mean, no, it doesn't feel as good as my old BRZ as far as utmost sharpness or anything like that. Uh, but it is, it's sharp enough. And I mean, for illegal street driving, you know, everyday driving, when you're not driving like a lunatic, most of the time, this car is perfectly in its element. You know, it's totally comfortable being driven 
it's seven tenths, you know, you take it up to ten tenths, it might get a little, you know, it's not quite as sharp as you would like, but like I said, it's just, it's really overall just spectacular. Uh, the refinement and everything is off the charts and the value proposition for what you get for your money is amazing as well. I mean, you know, obviously this one being the premium, it's, you know, right around 30,000, uh, but you get like a base one for 26, you know, one of these EcoBoosts. 26 grand is how much a BRZ costs. And for the same price, you get a larger, more comfortable car. You get, you know, more, uh, power, of course, 310 horsepower versus 200 and stuff like the VRZ. Um, it just, that's kind of one of the reasons why I love it, is that you, you just get so much for your money, and uh, the value proposition for this car is just really pretty much unbeatable, and there's a reason why they sell so many Mustangs because of that, and um, so, it, yeah, it's just great, you know, I have no complaints about this engine, I know so many people are going to probably say, well, it's not the GT, it's not the V8, it's lame for that reason or whatever, um, but trust me, if you drive one of these, I don't think you'll be disappointed with the power, uh, like I said, it's way more power than I can even use safely on the streets, um, the GT will, of course, sound nicer, but this is, uh, you know, I think with some exhaust systems, things like that, this could sound really awesome as well. And I think even stock, they did a really good job of tuning the engine so that it sounds good. I mean, it almost sounds like a GT with the way that engine sound is. They really did a good job for a little turbo four-cylinder. It does sound really good. I actually have no complaints about the stock sound. Another thing real quick that I didn't really mention too much is the brakes on this car. They're really nice. So, uh, you know, they have just enough uh, feedback and they're just sensitive enough. They're not too sensitive, but they're not, you know, it doesn't feel like it's really, there's any dead travel or anything. It's a very good feeling uh, brake pedal. It gives you lots of confidence. And these are, again, just these standard brakes, um, but they've improved the brakes so much on the 2015s that even the standard brakes aren't like crappy brakes. They're still really good. And um, so, yeah, I mean, even though this isn't the performance package, it still handles so well, and I don't think it really leaves much to be desired. So yeah, I mean, I definitely recommend this car. I think it's spectacular. It's one of the best bargains for this price point, and um, really just an outstanding car all around. So uh, yeah, huge thanks to all of you that supported the funding campaign again. Thank you, because of you, uh, this review was possible. And um, so yeah, definitely subscribe for more videos of this car, because of course I'm gonna be owning this car and I'll be giving my weekly updates on how it is as far as reliability and durability over you know the course of uh, the time that I have this car. And um, so yeah, and uh, one last thing, I wanna give a quick shout out to one of my big fans, uh, Joey, who uh, just celebrated his birthday today. And uh, it was very cool to uh, meet him briefly. And uh, so yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Take care.